Hi, I'm Flip Nicklin. Welcome to Humpback Chronicles. I've really enjoyed sharing stories about Whale Trust, what we are, who we are, and where we came from, and what we do. I hope this can continue through the whale season, whale tales, and beyond. Whale tales, not just the event, but whale tales themselves, will be the subject for this week's episode. The idea that one of the ways we could individually ID whales was by taking pictures of the bottom side of their tail is fairly new, but it really was one of the big things to make it possible to study living whales. In the late 60s and early 70s, a number of projects started individually IDing whales, but the idea of individual ID wasn't accepted internationally until the early 90s. And if you go back to episode 15, you get some of the excitement of matching whales between Hawaii and Alaska that Jim Darling did with uh, uh, the Giraffes family in 1979. Today, we're hearing from Ted Cheeseman, founder of Happy Whale, an amazing website that helps take the whale you saw and the picture you have of a whale tail and match it with pictures from scientific groups and other whale watchers and from a number of different sources to find out what we know about it and where it's been. Hi, Ted. I'd like to welcome you and Happy Whale to Humpback Chronicles. I guess my first question would be, what is Happy Whale? And how did Whale Trust get connected with you and your work? Happy Whale is a citizen science and research collaboration web platform. And at the heart of it, Flip, is the, the magic that, um, well, of course, you have well documented and shown here in previous episodes uh, that humpback whale tails are individually recognizable through photo ID. The magic behind Happy Whale is that we have managed to automate that image recognition so what we've done is we've taken images from and we've gathered images from research collaborations worldwide and most particularly in the North Pacific um, to be able to identify every single individual humpback possible. And uh, it's really the exciting part. I did not expect we would be this successful, but the ex exciting part has been that um, across the North Pacific, we now know probably 65% of all adult humpback whales that have been alive in the last 20 years. So uh, if you just take a random set of, say, 20 humpbacks from out in the middle of the Pacific anywhere, you know, an IWC cruise out in the open ocean off of the Aleutians or from Hawaii or from Cabo or just wherever, chances are Say in that 20, we'll probably know 13 or 14 of those humpback whales or more, and the rest may be new to us. So we're constantly updating things. But uh, the magic of this is that we've been, thanks to automation, able to gather thousands and thousands, actually, uh, as of this moment, this recording, 124,000 identified encounters of humpback whales around the world. And um, it's just proving to be a very, very powerful tool to understand uh, migratory patterns, populations. But on top of that, and I think the part that ultimately is probably the most meaningful is to get people engaged in knowing their whale as an individual, a whale as an individual and not just a creature out in the, in the, in the big empty ocean, but a, an individual that is meaningful to them. How did Whale Trust get connected? Well, that was cool. Um, so, gosh, I started talking with John Kalambakidis about this, John of Cascadia Research Collective, back in 2013. And he, it's a classic character, you know, he was super skeptical, but he's also kind of got this like, yeah, well, you know, might happen. A little bit of hope and um, and he gave me a small image set and we started working on it and you know time went on and I think it was probably 2015 or 2016 that I, I began speaking with with Megan Jones in particular and um, you know and as we um, <clears throat> started 
to, to see some success with automated image recognition, um, John gave us a much larger data set as a base to work with in the North Pacific and, um, and allowed us to display this publicly as a, you know, one part as a public engagement tool, but also as a conservation science resource. And Megan, um, and, you know, I believe you all had conversations across the board of Whale Trust and, and, um, and uh, saw this as a meaningful endeavor and followed suit. And uh, thus, you know, photos from Whale Trust were one of the first big sets that we got from Hawaii. Um, as a result of that and building on that, it's grown and grown and grown such that uh, we now know over, um, over I think it's uh, the numbers right now are something like 7,200 individual humpback whales um, identified from Hawaiian waters. And of that, Whale Trust data set is, is quite a huge part of it. Um, as I'm looking at it right now, 1,852 individuals. Um, it's pretty awesome. And, uh, and I thank you for that because your participation absolutely has had a, a strong impact in, in getting others to engage, uh, both from a citizen science perspective and also other research collaborators. Well, we're living in uh, interesting times. Uh, how is that uh, affecting Happy Whale today? And where do you see things going in the near future? Uh, how is um, COVID affecting us, these interesting times? Well, on the most immediate level, some boats are not out at sea that would have been right now as the northern uh, feeding season is coming to a close and whales are moving to migratory destinations, breeding grounds in the north and feeding grounds in the south. We're realizing that there's probably going to be a lot slower of a season for us, um, given that uh, that the southern side of migrations of humpback whales, particularly in both the northern hemisphere and the southern hemisphere, the southern side is, is really, um, you know, more dependent on long distance travelers. And in particular, a lot of my work has been in Antarctica. And there's, there's really not going to be an Antarctic tourism season. I mean, there's a few, few select efforts down there. A couple of research collaborators, one from Ukraine and one from right here, UC Santa Cruz, who will be in the fields and, uh, and actually a couple of uh, private yachts and such. But for the most part, boy, it's going to be kind of quiet, we think. The flip side, ironically, is that a lot of people are more stuck at their computers and so digging up old photos, which is actually really cool at times. Um, we've had images come out from as far back in the 70s and able to match these to whales that are that are still alive. And that's just that's just really spectacular and fun, but also pretty meaningful for the science. Um, the other major impact of, of COVID you know, we were funded by by tourism, and uh, I kind of took that route from the beginning because I didn't want to be chasing, um, kind of asking for donations. I didn't want to be, at, you know, always scratching for the next little grant. Um, and yet now, and that was working really well, but tourism is um, not very able to fund us right now. So we've recently started a campaign um, because. You know, just like this has to go on. I mean, if we essentially what this is allowing us to do is see under the waves into the populations of whales where, you know, the, the, the majority of whaling has stopped. But there's so many other impacts in the ocean now. And, and, and it's so easy for them to be sight, you know, out of sight, out of mind. I mean, ship strikes, entanglements, pollution issues, fisheries issues and and uh, and, you know, the ongoing developments of climate change. If we don't have good science behind this, we are really blinded for being able to keep our oceans healthy. Um, I, I think of, for example, the blob, the greatest marine heat wave ever recorded that pretty much destroyed the breeding seasons and feeding seasons of, uh, of a lot of North Pacific whale populations. You know, we're using this to be able to understand where, where did those whales go? Uh, the whales of Glacier Bay literally just didn't show up for a couple of years. And we're now getting enough data together that we can look and say, okay, did those whales survive? Did they move somewhere else? Answer to be determined. Watch the space. But um, but so, you know, yeah, now we're we're reaching out to, you know, collaborators and 
um, those who are for whom we're adding value to, you know, people for whom knowing their whale really has uh, added value to their lives, you know, asking them to turn around and give a bit back um, so that we can carry on. We're, we're working on, well, you asked, um, what's to come? What's to come is we have nailed automated image recognition of humpback whales. We find 97 to 99% of potential map matches really, really accurate. We can do this for other species, and we're working with the same Google team that helped us build this algorithm uh, to do a multi-species dorsal fin ID algorithm. I'm excited about that, uh, but uh, we'll, we certainly will need help to, uh, to carry on and be successful with developing and implementing that. Google is providing a bunch of technical background, but, uh, but not the money, and it takes money to get this stuff working, so yeah. That's that's the real deal, uh, working on it. Thank you very much for uh, being part of this episode. One of the things I always want to know is, what should I have asked? What do you uh, want to tell us about you and whales and happy whale that I didn't get to that you want to say right now? What should you have asked? Well, I mean... Obviously, I could keep talking about this for a long, long time. I'm working on my PhD with this, um, and it's really a, a delightful process most of the time. Uh, working with research collaborators and a huge body of citizen science um, contributors. And I think, you know, I want to believe that there's something in this for everyone. And, you know, whether it's the photographer who went out or, you know, the casual whale watcher who went out once and has a few photos of a humpback diving from Hawaii four years ago, or, you know, a, and the avid, uh, avid whale watcher or the research collaborator, what we've really tried to build is an embracing engaging and um and uh, you know open access website uh, for research collaborators not all data is publicly displayed a lot of researchers have seen the light and seen that it really adds value to the world thank you whale trust a uh, fine example of that um but um but you know i think there's some really fun tools that i want people to be able to see you can go into happywhale.com and uh, click the little browse tab and do some searches by region or you know by area on the map and such and then there's a little button on the left side it says show individual connections and what that does is it shows you all the migratory patterns of you know basically takes whatever whales you are looking at and shows you where they have migrated to and um, to me it uh, sort of really displays how connected of an ocean we have you know that issues marine issues say uh, you know oil drilling in off the California coast is important not just to protect for California but to protect for Mexico's whale populations and so on and so on and crab you know, fisheries issues in Alaska are important to the health of whales in Hawaii. Um, it's it's just been tremendous to be able to pull this together in one user-friendly and accessible space. Um, it's just a tiny team of us, two of us building the website and um, a couple folks really putting a lot of work into data management and and then and then a gazillion, well, I shouldn't say a gazillion really, honestly, at this point, 8,000 image contributors from the research collaborators all the way to the one-time photographers. Um, it, it's really taken, I think, a community and um, to some extent helps build community around the whales. Thanks. Thank you, Ted. It's uh, what a great new tool. It's very exciting to see that we're uh, getting a better and better picture of whales all the time and uh, people like you and, and the new tools like uh, a uh, happy whale really, uh, really make this whole search uh, more fun than I ever dreamed it would be. Thank you. And thank you all for your support. Bye-bye.